Welcome to Little Steps Big Gains and a new series on balance for life. In this series, we're going to talk about balance and what we can do to improve it. In this video, we're going to start with our balance strategies, the three strategies we use to maintain our balance. If you find this insightful, educational, or helpful, please press the like button below and or subscribe for the follow-up videos that are to come. So when it comes to balance, we use three main strategies to keep our center of gravity in our base of support. And the first of these three strategies starts at the ankles. When I go to reach forward, technically it's my ankles that should be kicking in first and foremost to prevent me from toppling over. That is called an ankle strategy. They are essential for balance. One study was looking at strategies employed during a static, perturbed, being pushed, and unperturbed stance and found ankle strategies were employed more than 90% of the time. We need our ankle strategies. And in order to improve those, we need ankle range of motion and ankle strength. So let's start with ankle range of motion. Unfortunately, as we age, the range of motion in our ankles tends to decrease. One study showed a decrease of 35 to 55% between the ages of 55 to 85. This is a problem because we need the flexibility of our ankles so that they can change their position relative to our movement. For example, if I go to reach forwards, I need my heels planted on the ground. I need the flexibility there because they are my foundation. This is why over and over and over, the literature correlates reduced range of motion of the ankles with balance impairments. Not only is range of motion necessary for balance, but walking, okay, if my first foot steps heel toe, that back ankle, that back foot needs to be planted down. That's about 10 degrees of dorsiflexion. Then when I do something like functional, I go to pick something up, pull up my pants. I want those feet planted again. That's about 20 to 30 degrees of dorsiflexion. So ankle range of motion is necessary for balance, mobility, and function. So what can we do to maintain that flexibility? While there are tons of ankle range of motion exercises out there, I picked out a few, put together some pictures, and I put them in the description below just for you. Now, some of these include improving your dorsiflexion. That's your ability to lift your toes up. That can be done sitting or standing, facing a wall. Put your toes up on that wall and lean forward. Another thing you can do at the wall if you're standing, take one foot, step it back, get a good calf stretch, get that heel down onto the ground. If you are sitting very similar, scoot to the edge of the chair, put one foot back underneath you, get that heel down on the ground. I have pictures, okay? Standing, you can hang your heels off of a step. And then finally, grab a strap, a belt, a towel, a sheet, loop it over those toes and pull them back towards you. Those are a few of the many ways to improve dorsiflexion. Okay, getting those toes up. Now, the literature really highlights the need for ankle inversion and eversion. That's your ability to roll your ankles out and in, especially ankle eversion, okay? being able to roll your ankles so that the inside of the ankles come in and the outside of the ankles roll up. That is so important for balance according to the literature. So what you can do is sitting um, in a chair, put your foot on a ball, roll that ball in and out, half foam roll, same thing. If you're standing at that wall, go ahead and take one leg, cross it over the other. Feel a good stretch there with both of those. And then finally, same thing with that strap towel belt. When you have it looped over your uh, toes, take one side, kind of pull it back, really allow your ankle to roll out. Those are a few of the strategies to improve ankle inversion and eversion. Now that we have our ankle range of motion, we need our ankle strength. We need the strength in our ankles that if I tip back, they can kick in to bring me forwards again. That is why ankle strength has been shown to be an independent predictor of functional independence, especially ankle planar and dorsiflexion, the ability to go up on the toes and back on the heels for balance recovery. Makes sense, right? 
Now, a lot of therapists test for this using the single-legged calf raise test. On one leg, going up and down. Holding on is fine. This is to assess strength. The ability to perform 20 of these calf raises on one leg is considered a normal muscle grade for muscle strength. So how can we improve our ankle strength? While there are so many exercises to strengthen the ankles, I went ahead and I put a very short list in the description below just to get you started. But we can start with simple weight shifting because there's studies to support that alone being good for balance. Having a wall in back, a chair in front, and literally just shifting your weight forwards and backwards, side to side. Normal sway should be about eight degrees forwards, four degrees back, and eight degrees to the side. So just doing ice cream cones is so effective. I tell people, pretend like you're a tree, very straight in the wind, yet rooted in the ground. Also, one of the reasons why Tai Chi has been shown to be so effective, I have links below. Including some rocking and reaching so we can step, rock, rock. Let me show you. Step, rock, rock. Back and forth. Phenomenal. I do a lot of sit to stands getting up and down, but putting individual's feet on an incline board in front kind of exaggerates our tendency to fall back, forces us to overcome it. Calf raises up and down on those toes that can be done at a chair with both legs, one leg, or off of a step as well. Lunges are great, squats are great. Grab an elastic band, go ahead and push that toe up and down against the resistance. Those are a few of the many strategies to strengthen those ankles. Now, before we move on from ankles, I do want to mention that sometimes with neurological conditions, individuals are unable to regain the range of motion or strength in their ankles, perhaps because of something like spasticity, tone, or nerve damage. In this case, a medical professional may recommend what's called an AFO. That stands for ankle foot orthoses. And it's an orthotic that can go at the bottom of the feet and hold that ankle up at a 90 degrees to help compensate for some of those impairments and help regain some function. Now that we talked about those ankles, let's go on to our second balance strategy, our hip strategy. So when we are reaching, remember we need those ankles first and foremost to keep our balance. However, once we get to the point that our ankle strategies fail us because we've reached far beyond their limits, at that point, our hips should kick in. It should be ankles and then our second line of defense, our hips. Unfortunately, when people age, sometimes when those ankles get weak or limited in their range of motion, they start using hip strategies all the time and neglect their ankle strategies. This can be very problematic. Remember that one study showed that 90% of the time we should be employing ankle strategies just for a static stance. Well, now this person's standing and a tiny gust of wind comes. Instead of just a small little ankle strategy and movement of those ankles, now we're into a full-blown hip or stepping strategy over a small gust of wind because that person isn't using their ankles anymore. That is why this video spends so much time talking about we need to focus on our ankles for balance. But here we are, our second line of defense. We need those hips as well. So we really want to maintain rotation of the hips. Crossbody reaching is phenomenal for this. Lunges, so good for this. Laying down, bending our knees, rotating those knees side to side. We need that rotation. If we want to practice hip strategies, in therapy we do a lot of extended reaching exercises. Narrow our base of support, bringing those feet close together. That'll really challenge the hips. Tandem walking, putting tape on the floor, walking on a balance beam. Those recruit the hips. Tossing the ball, balloon. I like to do dribbling around the world. Give a patient a ball, have them dribble, toss, dribble, toss. All right, we're getting ankle or hip strategies all the way around and then some balance practicing, motor coordination planning as well. So there's tons of fun activities for hip strategies, but they should be our second line of defense. 
And last but not least, our third balance strategy is a stepping strategy. So this is where we've gone beyond our limit of stability, beyond our ankles, our hips, and now we're stepping to retrieve our balance. Stepping strategies are difficult to employ on your own. Um, I will have people do lunges with modified plyometrics. In other words, lunging to the side and then using your power muscles to bring yourself back up. If impact training is not an issue, I'll have somebody on like a balance pad or a step stool and have them lunge one foot off and power on the way back up. In therapy, we do a lot of stepping strategies. We do ball tossing, balloon hitting, all sorts of things back and forth. But one of the best ways to practice stepping strategies is you have to have a therapist or a professional, but to do perturbation based balance training. And I have an individual walking with me and all of a sudden a gust of wind comes and you just kind of throw them off balance and practice those stepping strategies. I will be going over perturbation based balance training and slips and trips training in an upcoming video on postural adjustments to come. Thanks for listening. If you found this video insightful, please press the like button below. Subscribe to get notifications for future videos to come because together, little steps, we can make some big gains.